Well, hey, welcome everybody. I guess I can't change the focus on the front. So it must be my eyes that look out of focus or feel out of focus. Welcome back to the big boards, Kevin here. I thought I'd take a second because I had a great uh, gaming experience today, which is nice. And wanted to share a little bit with you. Normally I like to finish up a game completely have a little think about it, maybe write up the after action report and then comment on you know, what I think about the game. I, you know, using those kind of guidelines that I laid out ages ago about decision, <coughs> decision, uh, bleh, decision space, role, intelligence. I'm looking at my list here. Um, player objectives, the OOB, how uh, combats are resolved. Logistics, historical narrative, general narrative, replayability, playtime, components, digestion. And when by that I mean, you know, can you, are the rules easy to uh, use? That's what I kind of, that's how I kind of guide my commentary about what I think about the game after the first play. Because, you know, I don't, <clears throat> typically don't play uh, many games more than once or twice, generally speaking. So here I am. Starting turn six of ten, and I want to share this with you because I think this is a an interesting game that kind of surprised me. I I was very I had a very lackluster approach to this particular title before I you know got stuck into it. I kind of set it up, didn't bother uh, clipping the counters, liked the artwork, liked the counters. Nice, simple 10 page rule book. Let's just play it and we'll just get through it and maybe something great will come of it or maybe a cool story will evolve and we'll just, you know, we'll play it and then be one and done and we're over and done with it, right? A little folio game. And uh, set it up. It took a little while to set up. It's kind of like, ah, okay, that's fine. And then started playing and the, the guys, all the little soldiers, have uh, four mover points. And it's plus two to enter a zone of control, and it's plus two to leave. And I was thinking, wow, you know, how are, how are these two sides going to fight each other and battle? It's going to be really difficult and slow and grindy, and it's only it's only ten turns. So it's chip pull. So you've got no control over what's going on, and uh, there's all sorts of other thing, little things going on here in the game. Well. What am I talking about? Which game am I talking about? And and why am I why am I doing this video now? I'm doing it doing the video now because uh, I've seen enough to uh, you know offer some comments. And secondly, uh, the game is called Konigsberg, and it's from Revolution Games. Comes in a Ziploc bag, so you got to deal with that. Uh, it's not a, a boxed game, although there might be a boxed option, I'm not sure. And if there is, I may have to duck out and get one. And it's dealing with the, uh, you know, the, basically the collapse of AGC, right? So you've got uh, the second Belarus front and the third Belarus front closing in, and they uh, they get after it and fight, fight a very fragile German force. So with that, let's switch cameras and have a look at the map and the components and talk a little bit about the game and, and why I think it's a, a, a very, very good, if not best or second best, Collapse of AGC, Destruction of AGC title I've ever played. I would put it right up there with Frank Chadwick's Red Army, which I think is a fantastic title, uh, much underappreciated. And there are a couple of other titles that are around that I don't think very much of, and we don't need to talk about them. Let's focus in on the good stuff here. So just bear with me with the camera and we'll see what happens, right? Okay, we're back. So that's pretty funny. You, uh, when you do a live broadcast, you can switch from front to uh, rear facing cameras, but when you're just recording, with your phone, you can't switch from front to rear facing cameras with my particular phone, uh, this Samsung device. So let's talk about the, 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 the components first. First thing you're gonna notice, right? It's a, a fairly attractive map. The, uh, all the fonts and colors and roads and ru uh, 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 rivers and streams and lakes and the ocean over there near Konigsberg, all that all kind of blends in nicely. It's a it's a little soft, right? It's a soft palette, uh, kind of pastel style thing. And then you've got 
these different types of fortifications and uh, defensive lines and things like that, which uh, impact combat to uh, one extent or another. We don't need to get into the details of any of that per se, but this is your basic <clears throat> you know, game sequence of play where you get your uh, reinforcements that are put on the map, you get your replacements and you put them on the map and you uh, move and you fight and you uh, are done and then the other guy moves and fights and is done and then you, pull in, you keep pulling chits until you've reached the total number of chits that you're allowed per turn per front. And that's where it starts to get interesting. Because over on the left-hand side of here, we have the second Belarus front. I think that's what 2BF stands for, right? Yeah, it is Belarusian front, right? So uh, each, each color stripe here is a formation or a core, basically, or an army, I guess you would call it, for, uh, for the Russians. Because they, they kind of run around in these big... Uh, core-sized formations, which are really divisions, uh, to my mind, anyway. Um, in terms of effectiveness, I suppose. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so you've got all these different colored things, and each one of those things has, let me see if I can get it here, has a, well, you know, there's a random event shit, there's a formation for the Germans, and there's, oh, there's another one for the Germans. Uh, there's the 50th, right? So you've got these uh, different chits and you pull them out of a cup and there's lots of chits because every one of these guys has a chit. And, you know, this army, uh, the 40, what color is that? Your third uh, army here has one, two, three units plus a HQ. And then the 49th has three units and some of them have attached armor like this dude, uh, well, some formations actually have armor, but others have attached armor, like this guy, he doesn't have a stripe. So independence can be activated multiple times in a turn and can uh, uh, be activated by the, uh, you know, the formations as they, as they uh, are activated, right? So what ends up happening is because you have, like over here, I've got one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, uh, eight. I've got eight formations, but second Belarus front, they uh, they can only activate six a turn, and then it starts to decline. It goes down to five. Well, it goes back up to six, so it stays around six. On the other side of the map, over here on the third Belarus front, I get basically three or four activations the entire time, and I have probably another six or eight uh, formations over there, right? So only half of these guys are going to get get to activate. 70% of these guys, thereabouts, will get to activate. And all the independent armor and all that sort of stuff may get to activate multiple times if it's in the command range of one of these HQs. And there's the trick for the Russians, right? Took me a couple of turns to work this out, but what end of, ended up happening was by, by clustering close enough and pushing and pulling the armor from uh, off screen up and closer, we were able to activate some of these larger uh, Russian divisions. And, you know, this is the 8th Guard, right? 8th Guard Corps. Uh, we we're able to activate some of those dudes and get them into the battle multiple times in a turn. And then you have this nifty little, uh, where is it? It's not out. Is it out? There's a barrage marker and there's some air and stuff like that. Oh, here we go. There's one of these, right? So 3BF, any formation. So I could activate the same formation twice. It could be done twice, right? So now you've got to start, the Germans have to start guarding against that. They are basically getting three, four, or five activations a turn. And then uh, it kind of peaks and then drops back down as they're degraded. They end up with only three activations a turn. So a lot of forces for the Germans are going to be stuck in place, right? Unless you get lucky and pull one of their chits that allows them to activate any formation. So, this starts to drive some interesting behavior in the game. Uh, it's, it's putting you in a pretty interesting sort of decision space, which is one of the criteria we talked about in our, in our earlier on, right? In our list of things that we want to look at when we're at assessing the value and the impact and the, and the, the likelihood of enjoying the game. Uh, so, it starts to drive some of your your interest in 
who gets activated, when they get activated, where do I have these guys, where's the armor for the Soviets, can I use them to punch holes in something and then try and, uh, you know, maneuver through, which is what happened here. And the Germans, you know, it's tough on the, it's tough on the Germans uh, and it's nice to play a war game where it's actually hard on the Germans. And they don't have the Uber army, yeah. Uh, so there, you you get these, you know, these beefy six four eight uh, divisions. But you flip them over, they drop down to a three two, uh, three two battalions drop down to little two one eights. So they they crack quickly, and it's not pretty when you start having to lose steps on a uh, on a step loss and retreat. CRT. Um, most of the most of the uh, mods are going to be either column shifts or uh, adjustments to whether or not you retreat uh, based on like fortifications and things like that. So it gets tough for the Germans because they have a limited number of activations. It's it's, it's it's easy for them to begin to be pocketed. We've got one isolated guy over here. These guys are about to be isolated because they they just didn't activate right. And they weren't uh, they weren't able to be freed by uh, being able to move. Plus, you've got a couple of uh, nifty little in-game rules where you've you've got to keep these guys here until two VP locations are lost, and uh, and then they can start to move if their chick comes up. So. One of the so well, as you can see, all these these are the VP locations. Now you may think, well, gee, it looks like a kind of a slam dunk for the for the uh, for the Soviets. But remember, I said plus two movement points to get into a zone of control. Uh, so if I want to move adjacent to somebody to attack it, it's one for the hex to move into it, assuming I'm not crossing a river or anything like that. Then it's uh, two more to be adjacent to it. That's three. So I, I've got to be pretty close to and know where I'm going to be and then wait for that shit to come so that I can get in on the action and uh, get fighting. So it, it doesn't go fast for the Russians, but when when your 30, 40 mile wide, uh, um, excuse me, when your 30 or 40 mile wide breach does occur, it's pretty devastating. So here, the Germans stayed a little too long because they couldn't move. They didn't uh, have the ability to retreat, uh, which kind of reflects some of the command indecision and challenges that they were facing at the time. Lots of different forces coming from different angles. If we take a step back, here we can look at the bigger picture there, right? Uh, so I, I, I'm really enjoying this, the way, the way things are kind of panning out. Uh, so Soviets, those still have a lot, a, a big job ahead of them to capture a number of these different uh, victory locations to do as well or better than his, historical. Uh, it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough haul for them. So we're going to keep playing, but I wanted to share with you what uh, what was going on here and, and how the gameplay was uh, was feeling for me. So good, uh, not not heavy scripting. There's a couple of things that are scripted in here. The Grosse Deutschland removal based on a chip pull, some random events that give a little bit of flavor. Uh, a couple of uh, formations for the Germans are stuck in place uh, for a period of time. The OB, I, I, I probably should drop that out of my, my uh, assessments of games because I, I, I wouldn't know if this is an accurate OB or not. I do recognize a lot of the formations. I know the 50th Army. Uh, and I know well, what they were like, and I know the 49th because I've seen him, I've seen him 50 times in various games. Um, you pretty much have full. So in terms of uh, dealing with that, it's okay, right? I guess it's uh, as accurate as uh, most other games of its ilk. In t and from an intelligence intelligence perspective, we're looking at uh, pretty much full knowledge of what's going on. There, I think you are allowed to look at stacks. I'm playing solo, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, player objectives I've told you about, it's capturing these VP, these VP hexes, which are all geographically based, right? And uh, the CRT is uh, pretty, pretty uh, innocuous until you start rolling sixes. And then you're losing a step and retreating two or losing two steps and retreating two, as the case may be. Uh, you do have some air units in the game. They can add uh, either one uh, column shift or two column shifts. And if they do add two column shifts, then they go into uh, a grounded box where they, they land and then they're, they're refit. 
Uh, so you'll lose them for a turn. Now, of course, the Soviets have plenty of air. The poor old Germans have one. Uh, so they have dishes with how they do that. I did a couple of early counterattacks and everything went swimmingly well for the Germans. They got a couple of back-to-backs and started chewing on... Uh, chewing on some of the forces here and then I quickly realized that all I was doing was uh, setting myself up for failure as uh, these this tan horde collected closer and closer to me and then of course it was too late to run away. Logistics supply is pretty straightforward. Uh, you're, you're counting back to roads and back to uh, supply sources and then there's a halving of movement rates and uh, combat values and things like that so it's all very generic. 10 pages of rules pretty clean no uh no issues with them at all i didn't i like the layout the only thing i would say that i i, I was uh displeased with the print out was just the lack and this is super super minor point right i wouldn't not buy the game because of this but just you know there's no margin <laughs> on the on the right hand side it would be nice to have a margin there i like to make notes in the rules if i'm if it's a keeper uh nice uh just it's black and white, uh, nice artwork on it. You've got your random events table on the back and it comes with an index in the back as well, which is always nice. And then of course the, uh, the front cover sheet in the bag is that, which also looks good. So we attack on East Prussia in 45. And then you've got a full color chart on the back that explains everything. What are mechanized units? What do the Volkstrom look like? Which you can move those around uh, in game. And then uh, definitions of all the units and types and things like that. <clears throat> and uh, how ret retreat directions work. So I think the, the logistics are neat enough for this level of detail of game. The rule book is very solid. Good little story uh, uh, evolving here. It's, it's uh, been a pleasure to play so far. And, I'm, and because of the chip pull, I mean, you're going to have a lot of replay value here. Assuming that my little hack here of clustering HQs within four hexes of, or with of their or their range, I should say, or within four hexes hex range of armor groups, independent armor groups, if that ends up being a massive hack that will let you be uh, pretty gamey over here, then yeah, you know that could that could that could cause a problem because it's a it's kind of a an auto breakthrough. But it doesn't guarantee you that we can continue the lunge because, look, I've only got this far. This is a, we, we broke through last turn and I've only activated some independence. We haven't got very far because only this one formation got to activate this turn. All these other guys around here are activated. It's really frustrating to have that there. Um, you know, you can imagine the Soviet generals, oh, well, we were told to go do this, so we're doing this. And you guys broke through and got this far and now you're stopping. So... I don't know how much initiative they really had, but I'm trying to let the game system uh, generate the narrative for me there and kind of go for it. Can't really tell you too much about gameplay time. I'm, I'm, I'm running through these, the timing of the game, I'm running through them pretty quick. You're only moving four or five counters at a time. So a chip, each chip, uh, let's say there's, you're probably not gonna get into more than one combat per formation activation. So, you can move your units, roll a die, work the odds out, see what the result is, uh, execute that result, pull another chip, and just get after it, right? It's, uh, uh, I don't think I've maybe only once I've done two combats in a, um, in a, a formation activation, and that was a German activation where I had a fairly heavy armor formation, and then I activated three independent German tank battalions uh, or brigades as well. And we had five or six units going there. And that was that were tough enough to take on two smaller units. So really, really solid, solid game. Uh, I like it uh, more than Red Typhoon, uh, which is a different game, different system. But just uh, comes from the same company. Uh, nothing against Red Typhoon, but this has given me uh, more choices to make. It's a little meatier. It's got some layers to it that uh, as you start playing and start thinking about the game, it becomes a, uh, a much more interesting title than, is, than it appears to be at first glance. I was very pleasantly surprised with this and uh, thoroughly enjoyed, or I am thoroughly enjoying 
the exercise of the gameplay here. So let's see if we can get those Soviets all the way up there and capture all those uh, those VP hexes. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Ciao. Thanks for watching.